NATO is planning to deploy an armored brigade to Finland to protect the country. According to the Finnish publication Iltaleti, the brigade, numbering approximately 4,000 to 5,000 soldiers, will be stationed in the city of Mikeli, which is just over 100 kilometers from the Russian border. NATO sources told Iltaleti that decisions on the matter have already been made, and NATO and Finland will publicly and officially announce the establishment of NATO headquarters in Mikeli in the coming weeks. It is noted that weapons for the NATO armored brigade will also be stored in Finland, including armored vehicles. The Finnish Defence Forces and the national leadership have concluded that Finland needs the presence of soldiers from NATO countries on Finnish soil to enhance preventive deterrence. NATO brigade officers, soldiers who guard and service weapons and soldiers responsible for troop logistics will be permanently present in Finland, the statement said. It is noted that NATO considers the brigade's ground forces unit as a combat unit capable of delivering a strike that has a preventive effect. NATO ground forces brigades also protect Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Lithuania has begun constructing a base for German troops 20 kilometers from the Belarusian border as part of NATO efforts to strengthen the border. The base will house up to 4,000 combat-ready German troops. This will be the first permanent foreign deployment of German troops since World War II. The base will operate near the capital Vilnius and just 20 kilometers from Russia's ally Belarus. It will store and service tanks and other equipment and will also have shooting ranges. Lithuania will spend more than a billion euros over the next three years to develop the base in one of the largest construction projects in its history, according to Lithuania's defense minister Raimundas Vaiksnoras. The base will operate near the capital Vilnius and just 20 kilometers from Russia's ally Belarus. It will store and service tanks and other equipment and will also house shooting ranges. Earlier, Latvia and Estonia also announced the strengthening of the border with Russia. Thus, dragon's teeth and border protection structures were installed along the border of Latvia with Russia and Belarus. Also, dragon's teeth and concrete blocks have been installed in forests and private lands in Estonia. The Ukrainian military operation in Russia's Kursk region and the forced evacuation of thousands of Russians could seriously test Putin's authority. Pro-Kremlin military bloggers have criticized the Russian Defense Ministry and at least one oligarch, Oleg Deripaska, has already publicly condemned the war, American researcher of Soviet and Russian history Amy Knight wrote in a column for the Wall Street Journal. The author recalled how Deripaska criticized the Kremlin's defense spending, called the war in Ukraine insane and called for an immediate unconditional ceasefire. According to Knight, these comments caused a stir on Russian social media. He probably wouldn't have spoken so frankly if other representatives of the business and political elite hadn't agreed with him. As political scientist Abbas Galiamov noted, Deripaska is a very analytical person, so before saying such things, he always absorbs the mood of other elites. This is not only Deripaska's voice, the author reported. She suggested that Putin's assistant, Nikolai Patrushev, could also be among this elite. Ordinary Russians fed a constant stream of propaganda about protection from the evil West are unlikely to protest. But Putin's elite support, which is essential to his continued rule, is less clear. He should not assume that they will forever support a war with no end in sight, Knight concluded. Putin has given his troops just over a month to push Ukrainian armed forces out of the captured territories of the Kursk region. As RBC Ukraine reports, citing a source in the military political leadership, the occupation forces received instructions from Putin to liberate the Kursk region by October the 1st. It is noted that their task is to do this without removing forces from key areas where Russia is conducting an offensive in Donbass, primarily in the Pokrovsk and Toretsk directions. In fact, the Russians are now trying to send a mix of units to the Kursk region from all directions on the front, except for Pokrovsky and Toretsky. But armed forces of Ukraine expanded their control in the Kursk region and continued to advance. 
After weeks of operations in the Kursk region, Russia has managed to slow down somewhat but not halt Ukraine's advance. Despite measured statements from official spokespeople and officials, the immediate objectives of Ukrainian units in the Kursk region have become clearer over the past week. The main intrigue remains whether the next phase of this operation will take place and what its strategic goal will be as the further moves of both sides will determine the development of events along the entire front.